Hey, good morning. We uh, we got some snow last night, so today is a new day here for me. We're gonna get the uh, loader, uh, bucket, and arms off there, and get that all stowed for the winter, and get the snowblower on. So, and it kind of looks like I'll be able to use it today. So, hopefully, it all goes well, and we can get that taken apart and all put back together and ready for the winter. So. So I went to town last night, went to Lowe's actually, and I bought these, uh, these here, um, sorry about my hands there, bought these here, little roll boards, so um, the plan is, uh, one is going to be for my ballast box, and then <clears throat> one is going to be for the, uh, oh, the stand part of the, the lower bucket, and then the third one is going to be for underneath the lower bucket to, uh, just to be able to roll it around in my shop and uh, push it up against the wall and store it for the winter. So uh, last winter I put it outside, had it outside covered up, but uh, uh, we ended up using it last winter and it wasn't too much of a problem getting it uncovered and getting it to hooked up to the tractor, but I just would rather it be inside and dry and ready to go. So another thing I'm going to try to attempt to do is to uh, tear apart this uh, pallet fork um, setup. So it should come apart. There's just a big pin here with or a bar or whatever with a <clears throat> cotter pin in it. And then your your forks just kind of slide onto that with some collar stopper things there. So um, yeah, I'm going to try to take that apart and that way I can just throw it up against the wall. Um, kind of out of the way for the winter. I don't I don't see any use for that this winter, so I say that now midwinter I'll be putting it together probably. Anyhow, yeah, so we're gonna get going on getting this uh taken apart and I'll try to show you some of uh putting that blower on there. So stay tuned. Okay, so my recording, I guess, to, to pick up my voice on this part, so we're just going to talk through it. Um, <clears throat> got that roll board under there, and how I did it was by using this pipe wrench and uh, put it in that little hole in your loader frame, and I used my floor jack to uh, jack it up. And you can kind of see on the left of the photo there, uh, opposite side of the loader bucket, there's some wet underneath there. <clears throat> so basically what I did is uh, once the loader was off the tractor once I took it off the tractor <clears throat> and set it on the floor then uh, I used this uh, pipe wrench to jack it up and get the roll board underneath the, the bucket and then now I'm just basically going through the motions of getting the wood out of there and getting it on the actual roll board. I was kind of reluctant and apprehensive to want to offload that loader onto that roll board just I uh, didn't know how well the wheels would hold up to the the weight of that uh, loader if I happen to push down on the hydraulic system too hard and whatnot. So figured this would be a safer bet and uh, that way I don't destroy the roll board right off the get-go. So it all worked out fine. It's just a matter of uh, figuring out a way to get it get it up in the air and get it on that roll board. So 
This next picture, you can see where I've uh, put the other end on the second roll board. And that was pretty easy. I just uh, kind of lifted it up and rolled the board under, under there with my feet. And this last picture just kind of shows my pallet forks taken apart and up against the wall. Okay, so we got all the parts and pieces kind of laid out here. And uh, <clears throat> before I go to uh, plugging everything in and mounting everything, I'll just kind of go over this with you. You got a little grease dirt there on that uh, U-joint that uh, I'm going to be hitting that with some grease in it. Got another one right here on the other end. I'll be putting some grease on that. And this spline deal, I'll be putting some grease on that before I insert it into this part of the other end of it. And this one's kind of hidden. There's a grease circ in there. you got to kind of find the sweet spot with this little plastic collar. And then there's also one up here. The right angle, but there's a... Another grease circ up here that's going to need to be greased as well. And then it's just a matter of uh, hooking that drive shaft up underneath and uh, hooking this part to the front of the tractor. I'll show you that. And another thing I'm going to want to be checking too is uh, to make sure my blower has the uh, the gear drive as, as opposed to the chain uh, drive deal. So I'm going to want to make sure that I got uh, fluid in there, but I want to make sure the thing is level before I go checking that. And you got some grease circs here too on your uh, on your uh, lower part. Get what the hell, uh, augers, that's what that's called. So that'll be uh, receiving some grease as well. So I'm going to get to greasing and then I'll come back and show you putting it together. Okay, so we got everything greased there, and uh, go ahead and start sliding this under here and start hooking it up. So I can remember how it goes. <clears throat> So, remember, right, this part has to go up into here. And this will have to come off. Apparently, I missed some grease. Grease, grease on my hands again. All right, so okay, like so. And then that pin get this wire out of the way first. Like that. Put your little cheaper pin back in there. Pin ring, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's that part. It's real important you don't make this or make sure this shaft doesn't slide out of that because it's, uh, I mean, it comes out and it goes back in, but it's just kind of a trick to get it lined up. I don't play it or don't care to revisit that. Then we're going to try to take you under here. So 
that. There's the uh, mid PTO gear right there. And I did put a little grease on that just to make sure it was lubed up. Lights in the way. Just gonna line the gears up on this. And you want to hear it snap. Okay, so a <clears throat> little camera malfunction there. I guess I ran out of room on my phone, so I had to delete some videos. But anyways, uh, that last part was, yeah, I just want to make sure that that, that uh, drive shaft snaps on there and locks in good and tight. And uh, that's when it should cut out. So I'm going to move back up to here and show you this. Um, down in here, get where I can see, you got this little plug right here. So the uh, John Deere factory gives you a nice little still place to uh, still that other end of it. So you want to take this part here and separate it from that part there that I just pointed out. And this other end of this little pigtail is part of this bracket that I just put on. And you plug these two together. And from what I know, the reason behind all this uh, this little hookup here is it allows you to um, go in reverse with your tractor and your blower doesn't shut off. So you're not constantly turning your blower on and off, on and off. So that's what I know of it. This side of the little pigtail I'll show you later. That's part of my electrical hookup for my electronic chute deflector. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to put the bracket on that uh, basically has your hydraulic cylinder that your uh, oh your tractor lifts your blower up and down up and down off the ground there. So this bar right here just lays in that cradle like so, and then you got these. Just want to make sure that they snap in and they lock in place. Good to go there. Undo your hydraulic lines. And those will all have to be routed and plugged in. And I apologize, it's been a while, so don't remember everything 100%, but we'll get it as we go. If I recall right, I had my lines running through here. Yeah, something like that. Kind of like that. Looks like that'll be out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and plug them in and uh, I'll come back. Okay, so how do you check the fluid on your gearbox, you're asking? Right here, there's a little plug right there. I just looked it up in the book because I didn't remember. And uh, basically it tells you it should be right up to the bottom of that hole. And uh, I guess these are not serviceable, so you can't take the fluid out. At least that's what the book says. Well, maybe mine's a little low. Get a flashlight and take a closer look, but I made sure it was level, and uh, so I think that would be important. So, anyways, going to take a look and see if I can see some fluid there. Okay, so what I've determined, <clears throat> it is right there. 
Now, that might not be 100% level, um, but it is right below that we pull. Okay, so <clears throat> I just went ahead and rolled the blower over here because I have it on, um, oh, on roll boards there. But you can just drive up to it and just, you basically got to line that bracket up here with these pins right there. And you just lift it up. And then these ones here will lock in on the bottom there. You'll see that hole right there. That pin will lock into that. So one thing I will caution you on, and, and uh, I didn't cause any damage before, but that drive shaft is pretty close quarters there. So when you're pulling up to um, hook up, I'm going to make sure that you don't uh, put that in a bind. So that's kind of why I rolled it over here, because once before I went to hook it up, and I noticed I had the drive shaft in a bind, so I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to start this thing up. Make some noise and we'll lift her up. So shut her off because I see what's about to happen again. Go around the other side, maybe you can see it better. But that drive shaft is getting dangerously close to catching that frame there. I can't really seem to get the right angle. Right there, you can kind of see it. So I'm not sure. Maybe you're better off to. Uh, not have it in the hanger at this point, which uh, looks like I'm going to have to just lower it down just to even get it out of there. in there and that way hopefully it don't get bound up so we'll start it back up again Okay, so we got them <clears throat> hydraulic lines hooked up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so the next part we need to plug in is for the electronic chute deflector. It's this little deal here. So you got to go ahead and plug that in. And then there's a little <clears throat> keeper nut here that keeps that leather tight. There's a little O-ring in there that seals it up. Okay, so well that's hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the camera here. And we're going to see if that still works. So it's hooked up, or mine's wired to my 
When the key's hot, it works. So I'm going to turn the key on. Success still works. So pretty much that's about it for putting it together. I got a zip tie. This hydraulic line's a little bit better. Pick up my mess and then uh, turn the tractor around. And I got to hook up my uh, rear blade and get that set up. But I should be good to go. So we're making progress. Might actually blow some snow yet today. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. I got my rear blade attached. Uh, Johnny's ready to blow some snow. So I guess uh, probably I've covered this once before, but uh, I'll cover it again. Um, the main reason we bought this tractor was right here, this, uh, this setup, the snow blower. The rear blade was something I picked up for it. That didn't come with the purchase, but uh, we uh, we got quite a road that we have to maintain. It's a half mile in and out, and uh, this this was the number one reason why we bought this tractor. Uh, I get tired of plowing snow and trying to find places to pile it towards the end of winter. Um, little did I know that uh, we'd get so much more use out of this tractor. It uh, is a very versatile little tool, and uh, it's got. I mean, don't look let the size and the looks of the overall size of the tractor deceive you it's uh it's got packs quite a punch for its size it, it'll do a lot of work it has its limitations obviously and you know you shouldn't exceed them but oh no i can't be happier with this tractor it, uh, it's it's uh, quite a little quite a little tool sure does a fantastic job for everything i've asked of it so far um but anyways thanks for coming along thought i'd show you a little bit about the looking up the blower and uh I may have to include a little bit of snow blowing here at the very tail end of this uh, video, but anyways, we finally got her accomplished. Shop's a mess, but I got my loader bucket and arms and everything stored right there for the winter. So when I need it, come come time when the snow slides off the roof and I need a, a bucket to scoop that up and haul it away, just be able to roll it over and take the blower off and put it on there. So. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.